News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukut Ali. And top of the morning to you and welcome to Newsline. Live as always from the News First studios in Dawson Street in Colombo. And this morning, well, you know, tomorrow morning is precisely the fourth anniversary of the scandalous scam that took place at the Treasury, at the Central Bank, actually. And we're here this morning to try and figure out whether the people will ever get any accountability and responsibility or satisfaction indeed. And to start the proceedings, right here in the studio, live with us, is the chairman of COPE currently and the chairman of COPE during one of the COPE committee investigations into that scam. Mr. Sunil Handanetti, very good morning to you. Good morning, Mr. Wala. And we've also got Professor Rajiva Vijay Singer, one time member of COP, was a fairest critic of what went on and still is. Very good morning to you, Professor morning Rajiva. For us. And actually, um, I was going to ask you uh, what, what remedies are available to the public, Professor, when politicians depart from their remit of representing the people? I think the answer is none. And I think we're in a more desperate state than ever before. Uh, one reason being the only recourse the public have, apart from taking up court cases, which is such an expensive and long business, yeah. is elections. Right. But you now have a government that has managed to postpone elections right. and will continue to postpone elections. So you have a situation where there is nothing the public can do mm. except wait until the next election, which is the next presidential election, which they are now again trying to postpone by saying they are going to abolish it. But of course, nothing will ever happen in terms of the powers mm -hmm. that will accrue to whoever becomes the chief executive. As we all know, people have forgotten in from the 70 to 77 period under the Westminster system, you also had an autocratic prime minister. Mm. Our main problem is that we don't have institutions. Mm. So many people count out to those in authority. This happened under Mahindra Rajapaksa. This is happening under Anil Vikramasinghe. Mm. I think uh, the sad thing is that I believed, I had great regard for the way Mahindra Rajapaksa fought, fought the war, but I found that, you know, there were things going wrong in the last few years. And I had great hopes of Maitri Pala Sirisena. But Sirisen has proved such a weak man, giving in on all counts and then saying, I didn't know anything. He hasn't even read the Constitution and understands his, understands well, his own power. So, so the real problem for yeah. us is that a president who should act isn't acting. Many people are saying, wait till the next presidential. But as I said, we have no, let's say, faith in assuming that will go right. Mm. And, you know, in this country is hanged by lifeline by a few individuals take the appointments you know i personally let, believe, let, yeah. let, let, let's come back to that okay. um, so basically there are no remedies available to the public apart from exercising their vote absolutely all right so now then let's let's and i uh, think even that is not always a remedy as we found with my reporter let's uh, let's uh, move uh, now to the chairman of cope the current chairman mr sunin handanetti Mr. Andretti, there is always this perception and, and doubt in people's mind as to why Mr. Ranil Vikramasinghe says that Sunil Handanetti, we appointed Sunil Handanetti as the chairman of COP. Do you agree that you were appointed? No. No, Mr. Vara. No, they not appointed me. The Ranil Vikramasinghe or uh, UNP government is not appointed because right. of the reason Mr. Rajiv Vijay Singh also know very well Ranil Vikram Singh has never been a committee member of the COP. Right. If he say he is appointing he must be the member of the committee. Right. Because of within that committee they will appoint it. Right. Uh, for example uh, nearly uh, appointed me as a, again COP chairman out of 16 members, right. out of 16 members mean all together the government party or opposition party. So we are not considering that uh, in the COP committee, 
uh, government or opposition your committee yeah your yeah this committee yeah. committee in the in that committee uh, unanimously this mm -hmm. time they propose chairman sunil handunitti i see that is why they no i appointed all members of the coop committee selected me right as the chairman or in it, it is on be on my experience because i am in the member of the coop committee 18 years now not appointed i see yeah so good that good clarification there but you know tomorrow is 4 years mm -hmm. since the what the attorney general described as the yeah. greatest financial uh, fraud ever perpetrated on the people of Sri Lanka since <coughs> independence. Yeah. It's four years. The EPF are missing minimum 8,500 million rupees, 8.5 billion, over that. Yeah. And if, you, if they go to court and get a uh, judgment against the perpetrators, then those perpetrators are liable to pay up to twice that amount. So 17 billion. Mr. Andrinetti, <coughs> if you do the arithmetic, you'll find <coughs> that if they had 17 billion with them, they'll be earning per day in interest at current rates, per day, five lakhs every day. Yeah. A house, a 550 square feet house that uh, um, uh, Minister Sajid Premadasa is attempting to give people cost just over a million rupees. So every two days, we could have one house. It's four years. Yeah. Do you think we will ever get this money back? Not for four day, four years. You know, it's a, it's a 45 years deal. The bond, 30 bond. years. Yeah, 30 year deal, 30 year deal. Yeah. If it is happening without interfering the media, people, and the co-op committee and the others, Yeah. What will happen? At that time, when we investigate the deal in COP committee, uh, interest rate of the current uh, interest rate of the current country was nine point five to fifteen. Yeah. If not reveal that deal, it may be sometime thirty percent. Uh huh. I see. Increasing. We limited it to up to fifteen percent. At that time, mm -hmm. that ben that was the benefit for the country. Other thing, you know that, uh, as you mentioned, then tomorrow is the historical day, fourth, fourth anniversary, fourth anniversary of the uh, that scam, bond scam. But what has the happened? What what is the result? Nothing. Nothing happened. But why? Is a is the reason is. The government, especially president, say he is against corruption. He is against corruption. Yes, but he's the president nothing. is one man. Yeah, but the government no. Yeah, he is also including the government, president and the prime minister and the, all the all the ministers. It's only talk, no the more. The president is like a chairman of a company, and the prime minister is the managing director, the man who goes out there and <coughs> gets the work done. It that, is. That was the deal. Yeah, it, it during is during that it, time. It, it, you know. Uh, when they appointed the Arjuna Mahendran as the uh, chief of the central bank governor, yeah. Yeah. Uh, who gave the uh, appointment letter is the yeah, president. But, but in that, in the, the same way, uh, Mr. Andunetti, the president is responsible for everything. Yeah. So then we. I want to say one, yeah. one thing: when the appointment is getting given, the Arjuna Mahendran on assurance of the prime minister. Yeah. The prime minister says we we, we oppose it. Yeah. We oppose it when when we oppose in the appointment of the uh, Singapore citizen. Yeah. How he uh, assured? I, I am what one, did he one, say? One, what did he say? What did the prime minister say? And the, in in the uh, and that time he say I I will look it look after I will look in matter when one or oh, what. Uh, he, he assurance, given the assurance to the government. Mm -hmm. That is why president give the appointment also. Based what what assurance is? He, one time he mentioned in parliament, he went to the yeah. uh, wedding, I will look in matter, I will 
asked to come to country again, yeah. like that. But now he now says he that he doesn't know anything about yes. Mr. Mahendra. That, that's the thing. I, I, I know court also given the red notice. Yeah. <coughs> Has same procedure to Madhush. Yeah. Why we ask to the uh, Singapore or international court, uh, please give his... Uh, but uh, to our country. Yes, but but actually, uh, <coughs> Mr. Anunetti, international standards and procedures yeah. means that if you are asking for somebody to be sent back here, to be extradited, first of all, you need to have a uh, case in this country. It needs to be ch uh, charged here, uh, taken to court, and hopefully the court will give a judgment against that person, then you take that judgment and go wherever you are, whether it's Singapore, the UAE, the UK or wherever, and then ask them that this person is wanted to serve a sentence in our country. But none of that has been happening. I don't know why. For example, last week or a couple of weeks ago, a member of parliament, I think from the JVP, asked the Prime Minister about extraditing or returning Madush to Sri Lanka. The Prime Minister gave all sorts of answers and quite rightly that they'll have to serve a sentence there and all that. But there's one thing that the Prime Minister didn't tell the House and that is that in the United, between the UAE, the United Arab Emirates and Sri Lanka, there is no valid extradition treaty in place. They have signed it but the UAE Foreign Ministry refused one clause, which is to return UAE nationals to Sri Lanka in case. And thereafter, that agreement is just lying there collecting dust. Nobody has done anything about it, and it's not valid. I don't really understand why the Prime Minister didn't simply tell the House that. I think the uh, government uh, says that uh, Udarpan law is not enrolled in the uh, Arjuna Mahendran, but yeah. it's, uh, I, we, as I know, the, the, in the crime, it is yeah. not the uh, civil issue, this is a crime, for money crime, this is. That is why this is not enrolled in the Udarpan law. That is why we can ask for the International Court to return back Mr. Arjuna Mahendran to the Sri Lanka. No. You see, one of the problems for us, and yeah. let us be honest, is that the Prime Minister has perfect this technique, technique of lies and prevarication. As you know, you mentioned the criminal thing. There was an attempt recently to turn it into a civil offence yeah. by amending some clauses. That would have got through because we have a useless opposition that doesn't do anything. Also, we have an Attorney General who just refuses to act. You know, Mr. Vikram Singh is very lucky. I agree he didn't appoint you, but his party supported your appointment as chairman of Coke. I believe firmly, Sunil, they assumed that you would play ball with them like some members of the JVP did. Fortunately, we had Mr. Handunetti, he didn't play ball. Yeah. Similarly with Garmini Vijay Singh, the Auditor General. Yes. Garmini, I mean, Rani Lecture told me, we appointed him, maybe we made a mistake. Well, we should get rid of him. He, he, he but Ram <coughs> Attorney General, has been a disgrace. Why isn't the parliament attacking him? Why doesn't JVP or the opposition say, you know, Mr. Jaya, we have no confidence in Mr. Jaya Surya? Why isn't the president getting rid of him? You remember the way when the questioning was going on. We were very impressed with the Bond Commission, some of the members of the Attorney General's department. Indeed. When it came to Ranil Vikram Singh, he was treated with kid gloves, no cross examination allowed, a brilliant no, that, performance that, by that I just want to bring. Yeah. Thank you, Professor, for that. Because I want to ask you this. At the uh, Corp Commission, uh, sorry, the Presidential Commission of Inquiry, the Prime Minister made a big song and dance about that he's a serving Prime Minister, but he's gone and he gone before the Commission. But the Commission gave him kid glove treatment, special treatment. They sent the questions to him perfectly legitimately, legally allowed. But they sent the questions to him. They wrote to him. So they could have done the same thing to Arjuna Loshes or to Mr. Mahendra or to Mr. Pali Sena. Yeah. And then <coughs> there would have been no cross-examination or they would have been very limited. Mm -hmm. Now, just compare that 
where the Prime Minister was given special treatment. Now compare what happened in the Fourth Magistrates Court. The former Navy commander and the serving Chief of Defence Services, Ravi Vijay Gunaratna, came to court, first of all, dressed in his uniform. He was told by the magistrate that everybody is equal here, you can't have your uniform. Please go and change and come back in civilian, which he did. But he was not given the choice. He was remanded for five days, in which time the CID got the statement that they wanted to get from him and which he hadn't turned up for other reasons. Mr. Now, why the treatment? Yeah. One, you are treating the Prime Minister so with kid glove treatment. And the other court is treating a serving uh, a member of our, our, our forces uh, <laughs> in, a, in a very, um, to me, to me personally, in a questionable way. Mr. Parap, I am not questioning the court procedure and the presidential commission procedures and the, what, how they treat it to okay. person to person. I am not troubling with that. Yeah. But the problem is you can see the procedures and the, all the following the uh, actions of the government, not only prime ministers, including prime ministers, all ministers, member of parliament, and the, the, what the involvement of the, this process yeah. of this all four years. Yes. You can see, very firstly, I, I am the person who expressed the idea about this deal in the first time in March 2015, 20 yeah, 9th of March, very firstly, in the press media. After that, what has happened? You, you know, I will, I will come, we'll yeah. come back to yeah. you soon after this short break. Don't go away. Mr. Hanunetti is revealing something very interesting. This is Newsline. We'll be back shortly. News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. And welcome back to Newsline. We're in conversation with the Chairman of COPE, Mr. Sunil Handanetti, and Professor Rajiva Vijay Singh. You were saying, uh, Mr. Handanetti, <coughs> tell, us, tell us about the threats that you experienced <laughs> when you were the Chairman of COPE. Uh, when, when I uh, say it uh, one time, when we are uh, we, with the investigation of this bond scam, one day there was a one com, uh, co-op meeting in the afternoon in the parliament, but in the morning time, around uh, 10, 11, 10, uh, one member of the co-op committee, Velukumar. The, the, he is the man whom Ranil changed and put Sri Yeah, Wednesday. again, yeah, after that incident, right. Velukumar, he called me. If I am not saying true, then he, you can ask from the him also. Right. He called me, Mr. President, uh, Chairman, why you are not participating in the co-op committee? Where are you? Mm. I say, in co-op committee is 2.30 now. Yeah. Now it's the 10. Why are you asking to co-op committee? Right. No, we are all waiting for you at temple trees. Indeed. Okay. Temp I, I surprised. Temple trees. Arjuna Mahendran and the other officials also here and the government, may all members are there. Mm -hmm. Why you are not coming? I, I told him, I am not coming to the temple trees. Temple trees is not the, my place. My place is the parliament. You can come to parliament committee at 2 p.m., 2.30. Why you are not coming? He asked again me. Mm -hmm. The problem is uh, Arjuna Mahendran and the other officials and the uh, they all have trying to have a COPE committee meeting at yeah, Temple free Trees. Committee, yeah, yeah, yeah. At the Temple Trees. Who was chairing it? Who was <laughs> going to chair? Who, who was chairing it? The chairman was not yeah. there. Was the Prime Minister there? Yeah. Maybe sometime. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but uh, that has happened. That the procedures going on at that time. Yeah. Before that, they are uh, planning everything, uh, but they couldn't do what they want. Yes. But it, that has happened. In after that, he removed from the co-op committee. Uh, Very pillay. Yeah. And put this Velukumar. guy who has also has benefited from yeah. perpetual mm -hmm. treasury, Senasi. Other thing, you know, as the one time I have to go uh, away. Yeah. Go, yes. Uh, 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 why did you walk away? Because Just they, before they, you they, concluded. They threat to Auditor General. They threat to Auditor General in all uh, in the uh, my reports. Yeah. Uh, now, they they threat to uh, remove their uh, some. Uh, conclusions, some ideas, some logics, 
uh, from the report. They need to uh, put their own report. Actually, uh, at that time, yes, that has happened. That's the history. Yeah. But fortunately, we uh, re, we covered all, and we gave that uh, proper report in Parliament. After that, uh, my on on my report, uh, they go forward with the uh, presidential commission. So we've, we've had a look at your report, and we've had a look at the bond commission report, which is. Uh, you know, we, I've made it into three volumes here. I've also got the Prime Minister's affidavit yeah. to, to court, all here. But I have made approximately, I think, 15 points. I'd like to read them very, very quickly sure. to you. Let me ask you at the end of that whether you agree with or disagree with any of these. Prime Minister Rani Vikram Singh's direct and indirect involvement in the run-up to the bond scam the execution of the scam and the intense cover-up of the fallout of the scam is all established clearly. There are several actions that happen. Here we go. One, recommending and vehemently supporting the appointment of Arjuna Mahendran as the governor. Requesting President Sirisena to place the central bank under the Ministry of National Policies. Stoutly defending Mahendran immediately after the scam and getting various deputy ministers and UNP ministers and MPs to support Mahendran. Even Harsha De Silva, disgraceful. Publicly confirming that he, the Prime Minister, himself insisted that Mahendran change the system of issuing bonds. Even though Vikramasinghe had no technical knowledge in issuing bonds, it is a clear abuse of power of the Prime Minister. Next, appointing three UNP lawyers to investigate the bond scam. This is the Pitipada Committee. They had, no, they had no knowledge of how the central bank operates. Expressing strong support to Mahendran while condemning many others and naming them in Parliament on the 17th of March 2015, arranging for a UNP MP serving in court to immediately resign and appointing Sujiva Sena Singer in his place. Encouraging the MP Sujiva to write a book to justify the actions of Arjuna Mahendran. Encouraging UNP MPs to whitewash the scam at the COP hearings chaired by Dugun Sekara. Prevailing upon President Sirisena to dissolve parliament just a day before the COP report was out. Encouraging and publicly supporting MP Sujiva Sena Singer to obtain a stay order from court to prevent the publication of the Dugan Sekera report. Prevailing upon all MPs of the UNP in court to disagree with the contents of the Handunetti court report by inserting footnotes. <laughs> Prevailing upon the ministry <laughs> officials to coerce and in essence force the central bank officials to withdraw objections that they made to the footnotes submitted by the UNP MPs at court, and that letter was rejected. Trying his utmost to have Mahendran reappointed for another term, in spite of the growing evidence against him. Providing a position for Arjuna Mahendran in the Prime Minister's office in an advisory capacity as soon as Mahendran finished his term as governor, and when the president yeah. refused to give him another one. And finally, attempting to give an appointment as a consultant to the Ministry of Finance with perks and so on, enjoyed by an additional secretary to Mr. Samara Siri, Deputy Governor, and at the time, controversial chairman of the Treasury Tender Bond Committee. These are the points, step by step, that I say that the Prime Minister's <coughs> involvement in this scam. With all this that I have said before, to you. I've summarized your report, the Bond Commission report. What are the chances that Rani Vikramasinghe is responsible for this scam? This other, uh, I, I think one thing is more has to include it. Okay. Uh, I, uh, Bank of Ceylon has given the uh, they are I see. A very good point. Thank you very much. <laughs> the we, we need to find out on what, who told what. 
how did the Bank of Ceylon give such a huge facility yeah. to perpetual indirectly and directly? That's also... And what happened? And I can tell you the answer to that. When I asked this of a senior banking official, he told me that the Bank of Ceylon had their own investigations and took action. I then asked somebody else what action the Bank of Ceylon took against that person. Nothing. That person was merely transferred. The dealer was transferred from one unit to another unit. And don't, don't, stop. And don't forget. So, therefore, Mr. Andunetti, I'm asking you, how involved is Rani Wickremesinghe <coughs> as the minister in charge of the subject in this thing? I've, I've told you 15 minutes. As, as, you, as you mentioned, all these all are correct. I am also totally agree with you. And the other thing is, uh, totally, uh, Mr. Anil Vikramasinghe and his government, yeah. his other ministers also, not only him, yeah. all ministers must be liable for this kind. Is is that it? Other thing, but I think uh, people should take the action, not others. This is the as you mentioned the fourth anniversary of the bond. I want to thank one person in yeah. Central Bank, Deepa Seniviratna, Superintendent of the Tender Committee. She mentioned the one word, one, one thing in that report. Governor instructed to give, go to 10 billion. Yeah. Within this evidence, we go, we went all these investigation. As a government servant, she done a good job on behalf of the country. Mrs. Deepa Senegal. Actually, the country. Uh, must be deeply grateful yeah. to Deepa Senevira. Yeah. Professor? Well, as I've said before, very clearly, Ranil is guilty. Malik Samrekha, Kabir Hashim, all of them. Crooks of the first order, liars. But what is Sirisena doing? Why has Sirisena done nothing? Why doesn't Sirisena give Deepa Senevira the highest honor in the land? I think he will probably when, he, all, when all Four these... years later. And I'm sorry to say this to him. I think when Sirisena finally gathered up the courage, maybe because he's terrified he was going to be assassinated, when he got rid of Ranil Vikram Singh, which he should have done earlier, you guys also blundered in supporting him. Is, is the and I'll tell you this. Is the can I finish? Yes. And I think you <laughs> lost a golden opportunity to allow a new prime minister on a probationary basis. We all know now that Mahindra Rajapaksa had a slim majority available. Basil threw it away because he wanted a two-thirds majority. We are heading towards another autocracy through parliament. You all had a golden opportunity to say, we will give conditional support. And the first thing is deal with the crooks. Now, unfortunately, we are back in this mess. Ranil is carrying on as before. I, the rupee uh, is plummeting. To, yes. We are collapsing. <clears throat> For us, I have another request to make. Just that you've done this, the second bond scam, which we haven't discussed, in which again the Bank of Ceylon played a disgraceful role with the yes. Ro Ro Roland Pereira, whatever his name is, another acolyte, Paul Pereira's son, still chairman again, have another meeting for the second bond scam, which hasn't been properly tackled. We Why is Sirisena doing a commission on that? Indeed, we need well, to do I, that. I, I want to say one thing finally. Yes. I'm not debating with the political issues in yes. okay. Rajiv. But uh, Mr. Sirisena, President's actions like the, some papaya trees, are uh, there no fruits, only flowers. That's the thing. Thank okay. You. Well, you know, the President is the President, and the President has trained, has given Rani Vikram Singer. I think the President has been an absolute gentleman in this game, because he has stuck to his agreement, and he has watched with growing dismay that uh, his Prime Minister has not delivered, and finally he's got rid of his Prime Minister. Well, you know, good luck, and as you can see, with what he is doing with the, uh, the issue of the drugs and so on, the President is actually uh, now fast becoming the darling of the public, because this, this most serious problem, the drug problem, is very close to the people's heart, and the President has pressed the right button, and good luck to him. We've run out of time, but Sunila Andonetti, Professor Rajiv Mubiju Singh, thank you very much for being on Newsline today. And do watch the Newsline special tomorrow morning, where we have an hour special dedicated to the fourth anniversary of the greatest financial scam ever perpetrated on you, 
by your government. See you tomorrow morning. Take care and God bless. News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali.